In this guide, we will go over all of the actions the Arcanist and Summoner learns from level 1 to 50 in order. We will go over how each action is meant to be used and when applicable, the recommended way to use it. Ruin is your starting spell or GCD. It functions as your filler spell that you default to casting when you have nothing more important to do. Even so, its damage is nothing to sneeze at, so do make time to use this spell often. At level 2, you learn the spell Bio, which instantly applies a damage over time effect, or DOT for short, to the enemy doing a total of 200 potency over its 30 second duration. This means it is only better than Ruin if the enemy survives the full 30 seconds or if you make use of the instantaneous nature of the spell. At level 4, you learn the spell Physique, which is a basic healing spell. In fact, it scales with mind rather than intelligence, so as your level grows, this spell will become less useful. You also learn the spell Summon, which summons your trusty Emerald Carbuncle. Your Carbuncle will cast Gust every 3 seconds, which is a ranged area of effect attack, or AoE for short. Be aware that your pets are only about 70% as powerful as you. Hence, 20 potency of damage is more likely to be closer to 14 potency if you're comparing to your own spells. At level 6, you learn the spell Miasma, which does 20 potency of damage and then applies a dot to the enemy for another 200 potency over its duration. This means it is only better than Ruin if the enemy survives for at least 27 seconds. If you ever take your time to cast Miasma, you should always immediately follow it up with Bio, as these two spells' timings are designed to automatically have the exact same durations when used together. At level 8, you learn the role action and ability Addl. This ability makes your target do less magic damage for a bit. This often can reduce the damage of room-wide unavoidable damage since these are typically magical. At level 10, you learn the spell Eggy Assault. This instantly orders your pet to use its first ability when possible. This essentially means it queues it up to be used as soon as possible. If you use multiple of these order type actions back to back, they will be queued in order. Emerald Carbuncle's first ability is Downburst, which is an AoE attack of 100 potency, meaning 70 potency when compared to your actions. If the instant cast property of Eggy Assault is useful, then you can use this action for that purpose. Otherwise, with Emerald Carbuncle it is only more powerful than Ruin with at least 3 targets. At level 12 you learn the spell Resurrection. This spell brings your target back to life but is expensive to use and takes a while to cast. Additionally, when someone is resurrected, they have reduced main attributes for a while, meaning they do less damage and healing. When a player is resurrected, they are also completely impervious to all damage and effects for 5 seconds or until they decide to perform any action other than running. At level 15, you learn the spell Summon 2. This spell summons your trusty Topaz Carbuncle. This Carbuncle will cast Gouge for 40 potency, that is, about 28 potency compared to you, about every 3 seconds. This is a melee attack and single target. Its Eggy Assault applies Glittering Topaz to you, a large shield with a long duration. For single target, Topaz Carbuncle is possibly better for damage at these levels, but you should mostly use Topaz Carbuncle only if you need the shield it can apply. At level 18 you learn the ability or OGCD Energy Drain. This ability does some damage and gives you two charges of Aether Flow, which is used on a few other actions. You want to use this action on cooldown, but preferably only after an instant spellcast such as Bio or Eggy Assault. You can learn more about ability weaving in the video in the top right corner. You also learn the ability or OGCD Fester. Fester spends one Aether Flow charge to do some damage. For each of your dots on the target it does 100 potency more, meaning you would want to put your dots on an enemy before using Fester to triple its power. This means that if you plan to use Fester anyway, and especially if you plan to use Fester twice, the act of applying Miasma and Bio is in essence a free action. You also learn the role action and ability Swift Cast. This action makes your next spell with a cast time be instant. This does include Resurrection, which will be the primary target of Swift Cast. At level 24, you learn the role action and ability Lucid Dreaming. This makes you recover 3500 mana over 21 seconds. This is mostly important if you die or use Resurrection. You simply use this action if you're running low on mana. At level 26, your bio upgrades permanently to bio 2. This increases its total potency to 300, meaning it beats Ruin after 21 seconds. At level 30, you learn the ability Bane. 
Using this action on an enemy already affected by Miasma or Bio will spread a weaker version of these dots to all nearby enemies. In nearly every scenario, it is better to use Bane to spread your dots and move on to using Ruin compared to individually applying Miasma and Bio to each enemy. Also at level 30, doing your class quest line will eventually lead you to the Summoner quest, which is available once you complete the main scenario quest Sylph Management. Once you unlock the summoner, remember to equip your soul crystal to change into the summoner job. The starting action of the summoner is summon 3. This summons the Ifrit Eggy to fight for you. The Ifrit Eggy will use burning strike every 3 seconds for 80 potency of damage, that is, about 56 potency compared to you. This is melee and single target. Eggy Assault causes Ifrit Eggy to cast Crimson Cyclone, a single target hit of 250 potency, that is 175 potency compared to you. Due to the immense single target damage of Ifrit Eggy, it is preferred over Emerald Carbuncle on 3 or less targets. At level 35 you learn the ability Energy Siphon. Energy Siphon is an AoE alternative to Energy Drain that is better on 3 or more targets. As such, you simply replace Energy Drain by Energy Siphon on 3 targets. Your Topaz Carbuncle will also be promoted to Titan Eggy at this level. This upgrades the basic attack Gouge to Rock Buster for a 50% damage increase. It also renames the shielding action to Earth and Armor, although this does not actually change the effect at all. At level 38, you learn the spell Ruin 2, which confusingly does not override Ruin. Ruin 2 is a more expensive, slightly weaker version of Ruin that does happen to cast instantaneously. If you need to run, you can use Ruin 2 in any scenario you would have used Ruin. You can also use Ruin 2 if you need space to use OGCDs like Energy Drain, but your Eggy Assaults are on cooldown. You should still use the regular Ruin as your filler spell when you can though. It is also preferred to save Eggy Assaults to use for weaving if you can without sitting on both charges while we are on the subject. Speaking of Eggy Assault, at level 40 you learn the spell Eggy Assault 2. This spell orders your pet to use its second ability. I'll go over these abilities as follows. Remember that the potency values are only 70% as valuable as your own. Emerald Carbuncle will use Glittering Emerald, which does 30 potency AoE and places a circle that does 90 potency of damage over 9 seconds to enemies in the area, for a total of 120 potency per target. Titan Eggy will use Mountain Buster for 250 potency AoE, and Ifrit Eggy will use Flaming Crush for 250 potency to the main target and 125 potency to all other targets. This new spell does not change the fact that you want to use Ifrit Eggy on 3 targets or less and Emerald Carbuncle on 4 or more. The instant nature of the spell makes it, like Eggy Assault 1, very useful for weaving energy drain and faster. You also learn the spell Outburst. This spell simply does AoE damage on and around your target. It doing 70 potency means that it is more powerful than Ruin on 3 or more targets and at that point you simply replace Ruin with Outburst for all intents and purposes. At level 44 you learn the role action and ability Surecast. This ability makes you immune to most knockbacks but also makes you immune to interruption as a result of damage. What this means is that sometimes when you are hit with a particularly powerful hit, your casting is stopped. This cannot happen when your cast is active. At level 45 your Emerald Carbuncle is promoted to Garuda Eggy. This upgrades Ghost to Windblade, boosting the potency per target up to 30. It also replaces Downburst with Aerial Slash, boosting that potency to 150 per target. And it also replaces Glittering Emerald with Slipstream, boosting that potency to 50 plus 150 over 9 seconds. What this means is that Garuda Eggy is your best pet for 3 or more targets, while Ifrit Eggy is best for 1 or 2 targets. Titan Eggy is only good if you need the shield it can provide. If needed, consider that you can summon Titan Eggy, order it to use its shield, and after it has done so, you can replace it again while keeping the shield. At level 50 you learn the ability or OGCD and Kindle. This orders your pet to use its ultimate ability. Garuda Eggy will cast Aerial Blast for 350 potency per target. Titan Eggy will cast Earthen Fury which does 300 per target and then 100 potency over 15 seconds to any enemy that stays in the area. Ifrit Eggy will cast Inferno for 300 potency per target plus 100 potency over 15 seconds to all enemies hit. Essentially you want to use Enkindle as often as possible and you simply use it with whatever Eggy happens to be best for the general situation at hand. That is, for 3 or more targets, Garuda Eggy, for 1 or 2 targets, Ifrit Eggy. 
At level 50 you can unlock access to commands that change the look of your Eggies to Carbuncles. This does not change the damage of your Eggies at all and is entirely cosmetic. This is unlocked by doing the quest An Eggie by any other name. This also gives you the opportunity to use the Ruby Carbuncle, which is normally not used at all. To round off, let's cover some attack rotations. For single target, use Ifrit Eggie. You want to apply Miasma Bio immediately and reapply them as close to the end of their duration as you can. If the enemy is about to die very soon, consider that Bio is weaker than Ruin if the enemy dies within 30 seconds, Miasma is weaker if it dies within 27 seconds, and Bio 2 is weak if it dies within 21 seconds. On the other hand, if you plan to use Festa on the enemy before it dies, simply having your dots active at all is better than not having them. Once you have Ifrit Eggie, you want to make sure to use your Eggie Assaults such that you are never sitting on both charges. Plan your movement as best as you can around the use of your Eggie Assaults, and additionally, try to plan your use of OGCDs around the usage of Eggie Assaults. You want to use Energy Drain and Festa on cooldown, although if you have Aetherflow charges left, it is important you delay Energy Drain until you spend them on Festa. Use in Kindle on cooldown and try to plan it along with your Eggie Assaults. Don't worry about using multiple orders at once, as your pet is perfectly capable of using them in the order you told it, as long as you don't unsummon it, or replace it with a different pet, or the enemy target doesn't straight up disappear. If you don't have Ifrit Eggie yet, you want to use Emerald Carbuncle, but you should only use Eggie Assault 1 for the purpose of weaving Energy Drain and Festa in this case, as it does less damage than Ruin on a single target. When you have nothing else to do, you simply cast Ruin repeatedly until something comes up. For three or more targets, use Garuda Eggie. If you don't have Garuda Eggie yet, use Ifrit Eggie on three targets and Emerald Carbuncle on four or more targets. You want to apply Miasma Bio immediately and then use Bane to spread them to all the other enemies in the area. When Miasma Bio is about to end on your primary target, you reapply them and use Bane again to restart the process. You want to use Energy Drain and Festa on cooldown like on single target. Find space to use these actions, as well as in Kindle, while using your Eggie Assaults, which you also would want to use. Do keep in mind that Garuda Eggie's slipstream does not stack, so you should try to space them at least about 10 seconds apart for this reason. With all that said, when you have nothing else left to do, you simply cast Outburst or Ruin if you have yet to unlock Outburst. Thank you for watching. If you have anything to add or any questions, please leave a comment down below. I always make an effort to read and respond to the best of my ability, so I really do mean to invite it. Fun fact, before Shadowbringers, pets used to have their own health bars and enmity. Back then, Titan Eggie and Topaz Carbuncle actually were used for tanking for you, which explains their shielding ability. 